Canada, I just received a check of $25,000 for my grandparents. What can I do to ensure I don't squat under this money? So this is from r slash personal finance on Reddit. By the way, if you have your own personal finance question or story, go to forwardinbox.com and submit it. So my grandparents gave my brother and I each a check for $25,000. I am still in shock as I have never received such a large amount of money all at once before. This is not my inheritance, but rather a gift from them. I am 31, live in Canada, and this is my financial situation right now. Which, by the way, before we get into this, make sure you go talk to a tax professional within your country to see if you have to pay any taxes on this gift. Because states, countries, kind of differ as to what are the uh, laws, the regulations around this, right? Now, it might be something where you just are able to receive twenty five grand from your grandparents like it's nothing, but I don't know since that is in Canada. So just be, to be on the safe side, go talk to a tax professional within your country. So this is the financial situation. $8,700 in credit card debt, only one credit card. Student loans paid off. Congratulations for that. Car paid off. Congratulations for that. 62 k a year job, which is stable and secure. Thumbs up for that. $925 a month in rent. That is, it seems a little bit high, but let's just calculate that right now now in terms of like how much that would actually cost per year right so 925 times 12 is eleven thousand one hundred dollars okay that's not too bad right so 175 dollars a month for car insurance plus 120 dollars a month for my phone that seems way too high for your phone plan $80 a month for the internet, okay, plus $50 to $70 a month for utilities. I'll just put $70, just to be on the safe side. So $445 for that, okay. No direct savings. I have a pension through my work, which currently has around $65K in it. 10% of my paycheck goes towards it, and that 10% is matched 100% by my job. Okay. Now, I would definitely keep that 10% going into that whole investment pension thing. But on top of that, I would do my own investing after I pay off the $8,700 in credit card debt. Okay. So my number one goal, obviously, is to immediately eliminate my credit card debt. I agree. That is the number one thing you need to do. I have paid it down from about $13,000, but honestly just stagnated around eight k, and had difficulty paying it off. Okay. Before we continue, that is a scary statement. So for those that end up listening to this or stumbling upon this, right? You have to think about it like this. They are literally making 62k a year, okay? From their job, that is stable and secure, right? Their monthly expenses, not counting their rent, adds up to $5,340 basically on the higher end of stuff. So 5340 right? And we calculated the uh, rent amount, right? To be $11,100 per year, right? So we add their total monthly expenses, right? So $11,100, right, per year, plus $5,340 per year, which is $2,000 
$16,440. Where the hell is all the other money going to? Okay? So, let's put it like this, right? So, their job, right, is 62K a year, right? So, 62K minus... Sixteen, four, four, zero. Okay, so let's do that right now. Sixty-two minus hold on, hold on, hold on. Ah, screw it. calculator. Sixty-two thousand, right? Minus sixteen, four, four, zero. Which means they have forty-five thousand five hundred and sixty dollars right now obviously you gotta factor in taxes let's just say we'll cut this number in half right just to keep it simple okay actually no let's let's do it this way right let's say that, okay so they're making sixty two thousand dollars let's just cut that by twelve thousand for taxes right so they'll have forty K so 40k right minus 16440 and again like taxes vary so crazy it's going to be pretty difficult so let's just say that they now have like basically $23,560 left over after their yearly expenses and again I don't know their tax situation which is going to be hard to understand so Roughly speaking, they basically got like 23, 24 grand extra, like a difference. Where the hell is their money going, right? Like, just looking at this in like a really rough, rough perception, a really rough point of view, this individual has a lifestyle problem. Number one, key factor in noticing that, the credit card debt. Credit card debt typically is due to consumer purchases. Purchases that you consumed the item or service, meaning it doesn't stay around, okay? It doesn't last for a while. You're not basically buying, you know, Bitcoin with your credit card. Some people are, but this person most likely didn't right? So they have no direct savings. They got this pension and all that kind of stuff, right? Now, I'm assuming that this 10% of their paycheck goes straight towards their pension, which is a portion of the missing funds, obviously, right? And they probably can't do anything about that. So it's probably like an, like a mandated 10% out of their paycheck goes straight into their thing. That's typically how pensions work. So they pretty much have like no choice about that. That being said, right, there's zero reason why they couldn't have paid off their credit card debt, making the amount of money that they were making. None, right? And so for anyone in this situation as well, there is no excuse to not pay off your credit card debt in this situation at all. But let's continue. So I unfortunately got into an accident without insurance. Stupid, stupid mistake. Yeah, that's pretty darn stupid, which got me into that situation. So basically, they're trying to use that as an, basically an excuse as to why they haven't been able to pay down their debt. I also have about $1,500 worth of repairs that need to be made on my vehicle. Mostly maintenance, such as wheel realignment, crooked bumper, and scratches and dents. Scratches and dents don't matter. Crooked bumper kind of doesn't matter for the most part. Wheel realignment, yeah, you probably will need to do that. Besides that, I have nothing else I really need to spend it on right now, so wondering how I can maximize the remaining fifteen to $14,000. Well, I'm going to basically stop hating on the individual right? Because the thing is, in reality, their situation is like not dire, right? Like their, their situation isn't actually a bad technically situation. It's a 
foolish situation that should have been fixed a long time ago, right? But also, like, if you, like, for the individual that ended up writing this one time, please explain to me how you're spending $120 a month for a phone. Like, that is a lot for a phone, for your phone. Unless this is, like, a situation where you have your phone plan in terms of, like, the actual service and also a phone payment plan. As in, you're paying per month for like a brand new iPhone. If that's the case, you're too poor to buy your stupid phone, right? Like, if you gotta go on payments to buy your phone, you're too poor, right? Like, that is just stupid to go into debt to buy a phone. Like, that is beyond stupid, right? It's already stupid enough to go into debt, but to go into debt for a phone that you're going to have to replace basically after a year because you're just going to end up basically wanting to replace it with a brand new phone every single year, that's the type of mentality these individuals tend tend to have. Not to mention... Apple tends to like to slow down their older phones so that you're basically forced to get newer phones, right? But either way, for the remaining money, right, after paying their expenses to fix their car, pay off their credit card debt, all that kind of stuff, right? The best thing to do is, one, create an emergency fund with this remaining money. Now, they could probably actually have like an emergency fund based off like how much money that they're actually spending per month, which is honestly not that much, right? I believe it's like under $2,000 a month for like their total expenses. So let's do like um, a six month emergency fund. So that'd be about like 12 grand, right? So 12 grand for their emergency fund right, for a six-month emergency fund, leaving them, let's just say, three grand left over. So the three grand left over, what I would do with that if I was in their situation would put that into probably a mutual fund because typically their minimums are about three grand or two grand or put it all into something like a index fund that invests into the S&P 500. And the reason why I would want to do that is because then I could have my own account that I could oversee, that I have access to, that can grow with compounding interest in your favor, right? So instead of having a credit card going the opposite direction, you now have an investment account that is going to the green instead of to the red, right? Because a lot of people don't understand this, right? But compounding interest goes both ways, right? The reason why there's so many people who are not wealthy are because they have too many things compounding to the negative, right? This is why people who have car payments, credit card payments, mortgage payments have a much harder time to be wealthy, right? Because guess what? If you had a paid off house, you had a paid off car, right? You had no credit card debt that you were making minimum payments on. You had no student loan payments that you're, well, student loan debt that you had payments on, right? And you had investments basically returning, you know, between six to like 12% per year annually, guess what? You can pretty much see every 10 years your money doubling, okay? Doubling. So if you put 10 grand, it could go to 20 grand, 40 grand, 80 grand, right? Or depending on how much money you really put in, let's say that you go grind super hard. Let's, Let's say this person pays off all their stuff, so, like, after taxes, let's just say that they could, like, shove, like, 30 grand a year, right, if they were to live very cheap, right, 
30 grand a year towards investments that are going to compound and double basically every seven to 10 years, right? So let's just say first 10 years, that 30 grand will end up going to 60 grand. Then the next one, 120. The next one, 240. Next one, so on and so on and so on. And this is an easy, simple, hands-off way, right, to basically becoming a millionaire without really doing anything. Okay, it is literally the laziest way to become a millionaire, right? It's the laziest way to build wealth. Now, again, this doesn't factor in that you potentially putting even more money into it, right? I, people need to understand this, right? Let's see if I could find the uh, compound interest calculator just so that people can like actually like look at this, right? So let's just say uh, compound interest calculator, investor.gov. Let's see. So the initial investment, amount of money that you have available to invest initially. Let's just say, actually, let's use that $3,000 amount, right? Your monthly contribution, zero. Length and time in years that you plan to save. Let's see, they're what, um, does it say how old they are? They don't. Oh, no, no, 31, 31. So let's just say retirement age, about like 35. So let's just say, yeah, 35. Use that. Estimated interest rate, we'll use 7%. Range of interest rates above and below the rate set above that you desire to see results for, 1%. Compound frequency, times per year that interest will be compounded annually, calculate. So think about that, right? So a three thousand dollar investment in thirty five years will be thirty two grand. A single, never putting any more money into it, will turn into thirty two thousand dollars. Now let's just say that you actually do like a monthly contribution because now since you don't have any car payments, any credit card payments, let's just put in now monthly four hundred dollars a month, right? Calculate it now. Well, bam, $695,566.76. Okay, and by the way, this is with an estimated interest rate of basically about 7%, okay, which is very freaking easy to actually get, okay? Just look at some of Vanguard's mutual Vanguard's mutual funds. You could look at basically any S and P 500 index fund, right? They average over 12% a year, average. Okay, so let's put it at 12, right? Because it, they have shown over the past 10 plus years to be able to do this, right? So in 35 years. After an initial investment of three grand, of putting four hundred dollars per month now, in thirty-five years, this individual will have two million two hundred and thirty thousand three hundred and eighty-three dollars and sixty-four cents. This is the importance of compound interest. But also think about it like this, right? Four hundred dollars a month is basically a car payment for a lot of cars, for a lot of people. $400 a month is lower than a lot of people's student loan payments that they pay for decades, okay? This is why it is so important to get out of debt so this doesn't go the opposite direction against you. Okay, think about that for a second. This is the amount of money that you are making companies and the federal government that are basically bending you over and screwing you. That's the reality, right? And there are people, even now, getting docked on their social security for their debt. 
when they could have been a multi-millionaire not really having to do a basically anything, okay? Think about being able to literally eat Flaming Hot Cheetos in a rocking chair or in a hot tub while watching a movie, right, with like $2 million in your bank account, okay? This is why it is so important to get rid of all the debt in your life so that you could shovel money towards your future, right? And look, a lot of people think that they will never be able to get to this point. The thing is, the reality is, you can. But it's the things that you buy that end up screwing you over, right? How important is that brand new iPhone that you're going to be making payments on it every single month, okay? How important is buying that car on a car loan where the dealership is completely screwing you over every single month? How important is it to go into student loan debt or to keep having student loan debt because you think that the government is going to wipe your butt if you do public service for 10 years, which they basically screwed over 98% of the people that applied for it, that went through the time to actually do it, meaning they did over 10 years and got screwed over. Is it worth it? Is it worth that loss of income? Is it worth this pain? Is it worth not becoming a millionaire by the time that you retire? Like, like this is the craziest thing about this, right? Like, you don't even have to do anything crazy, right? That is what's sad about all this. And for those that end up stumbling upon this, stay tuned for more, right? If you want to learn how to get out of debt, Go to 40 com to learn the very simple way that anyone can do to get out of debt. And another thing that you really got to understand too, no one is going to care more about your life than you. Period. End of story. You could have people that love you. You could have people that care about you. You could have friends that care about you. You could have family that care about you. But in reality, you have to take control over your own life to get the results that you actually want. Stay tuned for more. Submit your own personal finance question or story at 40 Either way, imagine that you're basically missing out on basically $2 million.